trailer, Adam. Heard you had some uh, cool new Windows features for us today. I do. I got so many. I don't know which one we should talk about first. Mm. But you know, what I'm thinking is, maybe if I sprinkle them around in different places and we uh -huh. have a little Easter egg hunt and go find them, oh. that would be cool. I like that idea. That would be like neat. That idea. So I have a new feature to let us do that, believe okay. it or not. Really? And I thought we would talk about it. Absolutely. So, you know, you and I talk a lot about the fact you've actually got Hyper-V up right now. You're mm -hmm. getting ready to play with some virtual machines. Yep. I usually am running... Uh, one or more VMs, a lot of times, Cherokee does in shows. We all do. Uh, and we often have issues with, where am I going to put stuff, right? Yes. Do I have it all on one screen? Mm -hmm. You've seen my desktop. You know how cluttered that is. By the way, if you haven't seen the episode where I show you how to clean the desktop, <laughs> boy, does, have I got a solution yes. for you. i actually show sure you how to hide those icons and bring them back. So we have a cool feature tip on that one. That'll be an upcoming episode. But, you know, we struggle sometimes, right, trying to figure out where to put stuff. Minimize, get maximize, all the screen. minimize, maximize, yeah. bring this up, reduce that. It's a pain in the butt. Control 4, Control yeah. 1, live. Zoom, exactly. frozen Zoom. That's a little inside thing with Mike and I. Um, but, you know, I thought it would be cool if we had a way to be able to actually have multiple desktops. Ooh, that sounds and like a really cool new feature. And apparently, so did Microsoft. Join me here. Let's take a look. We're going to show you how to actually use a brand new built-in feature. It's actually kind of cool. It's not so new in the sense we've had the ability to use virtual desktops for some time in one form or another. VDI has been around for probably a decade or more, depending on who uh, you look at in terms of the vendor. Citrix certainly is kind of the pioneer in this area in many respects. Uh, the Zen solution line these days, Zen Desktop, certainly. Uh, but the idea of VDI, Microsoft has had a VDI stack for a number of years on the server side, right? Enterprise uh, solutions where we can spin up essentially multiple VMs and serve them up into a variety of minimalist hardware platforms. I was actually talking about this with somebody outside of work, uh, just sitting and having a conversation recently, uh, and he was sharing with me, you know, they were struggling with trying to deploy VDI, not this solution. We're going to show you this in Windows 10 in a second, but they were struggling to deploy a full-blown VDI solution uh, because as they went to deploy the hardware, uh, workers in the organization were pushing back because they didn't feel comfortable with it. It was a brand new change for them, mm -hmm. and they were having driver issues, trying to initialize things like scanners. Mm -hmm. Every time the systems would reset at night, the drivers would blow up. They'd have to reset the machines every day. It was just a nightmare, and they couldn't get it working. They actually ultimately had to throw all that investment away and go and, and essentially go back to uh -oh. you know full-blown desktops and redo everything. So it was, unfortunately, not a very positive experience for them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting what we're about to show you is a full-blown VDI solution. Okay. Let's be clear. It's not that we're not serving up virtual instances from a server farm, even though I mentioned Mike's running Hyper-V over there. No magic behind the scenes, right? <laughs> so we're not doing any of that. But what we are doing, and actually we're talking about this with Wes right before the episode. He wandered in and was talking with us about this. We're actually serving up what Microsoft's calling virtual desktops. Really, we're creating almost like shells, right? Yeah. That we're able to, uh, all, not quite all tab. We're not all tabbing to move between them. We're going to do a Windows control left and right key shortcut to move. But it's similar, if you're used to moving between open windows with alt tab, to that idea. Right. Except we're going to apply that to our desktop and have multiple desktops that we can actually use. And then and we this can do a little... Cool. So the whole inception thing where on each desktop you have multiple apps and then you can alt tab between those. You can. Now it's interesting because, and I think <laughs> I, I showed you this when we were setting this up. So certain apps that are system apps, in other words, mm -hmm. things that are running in the sys tray are available right. on every desktop, obviously. So we're not totally isolated and siloed. Wes and I were just talking about this part of the episode. We're not creating a total virtual machine that is sandboxed. We're creating essentially a shell that allows us to organize the desktop individually and choose those shells. So you'll see I have one desktop that's clean, and I have one that has three or four things open, and I can move between them, but apps that are running in the sys tray, like Sky, uh, you know, Sky related, Sky related, Skype, listen to me, cloud um, related, Skype yep. or, or cloud related, <laughs> apps. I keep thinking SkyDrive when I want to say OneDrive, <laughs> I'm just stuck in that old mode, uh, but OneDrive, for instance, or Slack, which, you know, we use here at IT Pro TV as our internal communication collaboration tool, that's running because that's not pegged to a desktop, right. it's actually running underneath in the system. So we do want to understand the boundaries of this, right? What we are able to isolate, what we're not isolating, but it is still a step forward. It is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to zoom in real quick, as we often do, just to show you kind of the verbiage here, give you a sense of what's going on. So we're creating new virtual desktops with what's called Task View. That is something I honestly uh, have ignored almost without fail <laughs> since it showed up in Windows because I said, what the heck do I need that for, right? Guilty, yeah. Uh, you know, nice. I just, it's one of those icons. I'll show you where it is. It's on the taskbar down there right near the Windows flag. 
And it sits there. To me, it looks like a little piece of film, or maybe a conveyor belt or something. Yeah. And I looked at it once. I'm like, okay, there's nothing of any value there. And I, I never went back. But there actually are some cool things that are starting to appear there. So we're going to take a look at that. But if you haven't seen the icon, it's what that little bar looks like with the little, you know, uh, bucket or something in there. <laughs> and we're going to click new desktop. It'll be at the upper left. It's kind of gray in the background there because I have the dark mode running. Maybe a little hard to see, so I'll point that out to you. And then we'll be able to switch back and forth. Now, they say switch back and forth by going to task view. Ah, but that's for beginners. We're yeah. going to use that Windows shortcut that we talked about, Windows key, control, and left and right arrows. Let us navigate back and forth between the desktops. And we can set up uh, up to eight or nine desktops. I think it's eight think that eight. we can go yep. all the way across. So if you have all these different desktops, you actually can spin them out. So let's go take a look. Our task button, our task view right down there, right between the Windows flag and the Edge Explorer icon. You'll see it right there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go in there. So let me just bring that up. And you'll see it minimizes down, right, my desktop item that was open, my little tip window. This is just the graphical background on my desktop. But you'll notice up top here, I've got two desktops. And notice the blue border around desktop two. That's the active desktop, the one I'm on. It shows the Windows tile there that we were just looking at, mm -hmm. previewing this feature is open. But notice to the left, desktop one, it doesn't show anything open because I have a bunch of stuff open, but it's all minimized right now. There's nothing active right. in the screen. So it's open in the taskbar, but you're not seeing it. And to the right, I have that new desktop window, and I can just click there to start adding these desktop screens as we go. So let's start by switching between them. Now, if I go in here, I can just click on the desktop, and when I hover before I even click, I do have things up. You can see there are four items open there, and it does preview them for me and show you what they are. I've got a notepad file open, some show notes for something I'm doing, got a couple of web uh, pages open in Edge. I've got my file explorer open with some notes for a show that I'm working on. We see a preview of all those things, and I can go click on any one of them. You see they become active, and you'll see that I can't highlight, and I could in theory close it. I don't even have to go to the desktop. I could just see it right there, and I could reach right out and close that in theory, but not even engage the desktop from this central selector window if I wanted to. Yeah, I find that view extremely handy too, because you can also spawn, you can drag one of those from one desktop to a new desktop if you wanted to. You can now also, from one to two. you can now look what I just did. I know you were talking, so mm -hmm. I apologize. I just right clicked on the Exchange Online, the little Windows Explorer mm -hmm. square that I'm in, and you'll notice that when I right clicked on it, I get some other options here. Snap left, snap right, I can move them around. You said move mm -hmm. to. I, I'm a froze. I'm in a frozen screen capture right now to zoom in. So as a result, I'm not going to be able to click live. You see, move to, but I can show this window on all desktops. To Mike's yeah. point, I can actually replicate this across all the open desktops, which I think is kind of neat. I didn't even know. If that I did want to know yeah. that, and then show windows from this app on all desktops, meaning I can move things around as you were suggesting. I could also close this as I indicated. So this actually has a lot more features built in. They're kind of buried yeah. there. You just mm -hmm. got to go searching to find them, right? <laughs> and it keeps going away because I'm zooming in and freezing it with a tool called Zoom In. Uh, essentially take a screen capture when I do that so we can interact and see that. So that's why it keeps kind of going away. So I apologize. I will use the shortcuts to navigate in just a minute. Uh, but you'll see here, I can also, and let me just uh, see the best way to do this. Can Parker, can you go full screen for me for a second? I want to show what's going on back here. So you'll notice I also have a search feature there, a little search icon. And I have this thing that's kind of a bar that goes down the right, uh, and it's the timeline, right? And it actually is showing me what's been opened and what's going on there. And so I have that capability to be able to go in here, as you can see, and look, I'm scrolling, I'm grabbing it and scrolling, I'm just mm. moving down with my, um, I'm holding down the left mouse key, I'm kind of moving down uh, with my touchpad, right? Uh -huh. And you'll notice I'm able to go back through here and talk about or see all these different things that I've opened in timeline. And I can bring something up from before. You know, a lot of times I'm guilty of this. I will leave my machine running for days on end, right, overnight as we do shows. I'll put it into sleep mode, right, bring it back up. Uh, and because I want to have a bunch of websites open or things I've prepped for shows, I don't want to close them and constantly have to go back in and open everything or bookmark everything. But every so often I'll lose a web page, something happens, right? So, yeah, control, uh, shift T, right, shortcut mm -hmm. to bring that page back up from in tab view. But what if I close the browser? It's already gone, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, with timeline, it's got a record of all that there, and I can go grab that and actually bring that back. 
Hmm. So it's actually kind of neat. There's a lot of subtlety built into this tool that you just don't realize until you start to play with it, which I actually think is pretty neat. That is neat. All right, now it's not the prime focus of what we're doing. It's kind of indirect, but it is kind of cool. All right, so let's shift over. I'm right now on desktop one. So let's just go to desktop one. And again, it looks just like my desktop, except down below now on the taskbar, you can see, right, that I do have those items we saw in preview opened up. You can kind of see them indicated down there, right? They're minimized, but you can see them. Now, remember the keyboard shortcut? Uh, to navigate, Windows key, control, control, left and right. Left, right, right. Yeah. So I'm on my first desktop. So if I'm hitting my left key, which I am, I'm not going anywhere. I know I'm on desktop one. Hit the right key, and I immediately move, because it's now you know desktop two. I moved over to the desktop that we started with right there. And if I want to go back, just left arrow, and I can go back and forth here pretty easily. It takes a second to refresh, but I can go in and do that with no trouble. And if I want to go back in and I want to create multiple desktops, I don't even need to name them. You could see I'm just going in and they are spinning up there as I go. I got to eight desktops. That's the maximum as we suggested. And then I could just work with either one or multiples of these to set things up like Mike was suggesting. And then when I'm done, I can simply go in and I can close them out. And as I do that, uh, I'm able to see that they disappear here. And I'm able to go ahead and let's just jump back into this desktop where we were and simply navigate back and forth. Yeah. So it's actually a pretty powerful tool. It's really amazing. And one thing we can't show you here uh, because of our limitation is it works with multiple monitors as well. Yeah. So like when I'm sitting in my desk and, and Nate, the guy that, that uploads all our videos for us, um, He's working with multiple monitors, and I watch him work, and he flips back and forth. And he's got, you know, a set of monitors set up for when he's uploading shows. He's got four or five different applications snapped, pinned to this set of, of windows. And then when he needs to do another task, he's simply Windows Control left or right, and all three monitors switch to a whole other set of tasks that he's responsible for doing. Um, so when you said organize earlier, I think that's really the, the best way to look at this is it's a way to organize I've got a task to do, and that task involves three or four different applications or windows. I can have all those open, and when I need to move to another task, I don't have to close them all and open up other things. I can leave those on their own virtual desktop sitting there waiting for me whenever I need to do that task again. And it's, it's really very powerful once you get used to it. All right, so yeah, actually the productivity thing, really cool. You know, Nate is uh, so important to what we do here at Bridge, right? We can't even under or rather overstress just how critical <laughs> he is to the success we create for you every day. Uh, but if he didn't have this tool, while he could be pro mm -hmm. productive and probably do the same things, he might not be uh, able to be as productive, which yeah. means our episodes would take longer to get to you. Uh, so we're thankful for that. This Very is fair. cool. Thumbs up for Microsoft. And we haven't done this in other episodes. I thought it would be cool to start. You know, Microsoft gives us at the lower left-hand corner of these little uh, items that we talk about, these tiles to show you new features, the ability to vote, thumbs up, thumbs down, on what we like. Uh, and I thought it would be cool if we just wrap up by uh, deciding whether or not we think it's a good thumbs up or maybe yeah. thumbs down. Let's so I'm going to go with... Uh, Adam goes thumbs up. Thumbs up. up. And... And, and I'm also going to go rock, and rock beats <laughs> thumb, and uh, lizard rock Spock, I win. So I'm going to go actually two thumbs up on this one. This nice. one, I think, is actually because of the ability to move things around, add, and uh, see the timeline. I think it's an extra cool one. All right. Yeah. All right. So join us for new, cool, exciting Windows features throughout the series. And if you have a feature you want to see us talk about that maybe we haven't gotten to, drop us a line. And if we can incorporate it in the show, we will. And we'll mention you and give you credit for it. Sounds good. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. See, see you soon. You.